As an aeronautical engineer, I've had to maintain aeroplanes. I've sometimes managed whole fleets of aeroplanes. Now in my job, I um, regulate, I'm involved in the regulation of aviation safety. And in all of those jobs, I have loved air crew that use autopilot a lot. It's easier on the airplane, it's more efficient, it's generally more effective, and it overall it's safer. It's more likely to get you where you want to be with a minimum of risk. So like I said, as an engineer, I love air crew that use autopilot a lot. I think the people who run Rolex are kind of similar. I think at the moment, they're, they're rolling along, flying on autopilot really very effectively, and they're achieving great outcomes. But exactly as, as much as I love air crew that use autopilots, I'm glad there's air crew there to make changes as dangers slowly arise in the, in the horizon. I think Rolex needs to be able to do the same. Therefore, I'm not really going to do a, a Rolex prediction video because I don't think there's a lot of point. I think uh, Rolex will largely just proceed on autopilot this year. What I'm instead going to do is say, what is the one change I would make if I was Rolex, um, if, if I was the pilot in charge of the good ship Rolex, um, in view of a potential problem on the horizon? Hi, welcome back to Not So Obvious Watches. I'm Pete McConville, and as I said, this is not a Rolex prediction video. As I said, if I did have to, if you held a gun to my head and said, make a Rolex prediction, what I'd say is more of the same, some slightly different color variations, maybe some size changes, that's about it. This is, in fact, the change I think Rolex might want to make, um, not for today, but for the long-term future of the company. Right now, Rolex is on top of the world. Rolex is a colossus that stands astride the watch industry, making money hand over fist, increasing their dominance in the market. But one of the things I've kind of stumbled upon, um, maybe it's not, I haven't stumbled upon, maybe it's really original, maybe it's not original at all, sorry. Maybe everyone knows this, but certainly it's come to light in my mind. As I've been kind of thinking about how might Omega overtake Rolex, I've kind of seen a weakness in Rolex's long-term strategy. And that is, it's kind of painted itself into a corner. It's got this kind of three ideas going at once. They are exclusive and hard to get. They're simple, robust, and straightforward. And they don't really change very much. They're very predictable. That's kind of the core of the Rolex appeal. And it's from that everything else comes, all the value retention, blah, blah, blah. The problem I see there is the only way to grow the company is to charge more for your watches. Because um, you can't sell any more watches because that that is a break on your exclusivity engine. The whole system relies upon you having to having um, really tight control of your watches and for people to have to crawl over broken glass to get them. You start selling more watches to make more money, then the whole exclusivity engine breaks down. So then the only if you can't sell more watches, your only option is to make them more expensive. But at the end of the day, you're not, Rolex isn't AP or Patek. They don't have this like underpinning sense of inherent value, high complication, high value watches, which can kind of prop up, provide some, some credence to the idea that a 5711 or a Royal Oak is worth some exorbitant amount because it's underpinned by these really high value watches. If you look under the exclusivity, under the hood of the exclusivity engine, if you like, for Rolex, the cupboard's kind of bare. There's nothing there. Um, take away the exclusivity and 
there's nothing to support those high prices. And that's potentially a problem for Rolex, not now, not in five years, but maybe sometime down the future. Now, Rolex hasn't always been what it is today. It is the subject, it is the result of evolution. Once upon a time, Rolex made more complicated watches. They let that go about 50 years ago at the time of the quartz crisis. Perhaps it's time for that to come back again. Perhaps it's time for Rolex to perhaps moderate its position and evolve past the idea of we don't do complications and start reintroducing those. And for that reason, if I was the pilot in charge of the good ship, good aircraft, mixing my metaphors, uh, ship Rolex right now, what I would be wanting to introduce at, if not this Watches and Wonders, then maybe next year, would be a reintroduction of the Jean Cord Kelly uh, Rolex, the triple calendar, maybe play with it a little bit, amp it up a little bit, and make it a perpetual calendar. A lot is made of the fact that Rolex don't do high complications, but you know what? We all know they have the expertise. They could if they wanted to. It's been a choice to pull that back. I believe they should start making that choice to reintroduce it, ease it into the catalog, make them available, make them really expensive. You're going to be able to charge whatever you want. I'm not saying make 10,000 of these, just make a few, get them out get people comfortable with the idea that Rolex does in fact make these sorts of watches, ease into that over the next couple of years, amping up the complications. Not so much that you fundamentally change the idea of the identity of Rolex, but just enough that you add another string to your bow, just enough that you begin to underpin the idea that a Rolex Submariner or a Rolex GMT Master is in fact worth the kinds of money that people want to pay for it right now because behind it is a company with real horological gravitas. And at the moment, Rolex has given that up. They've chosen to step back from it. I think that at the moment, they're getting away with it. I think that at the moment, though, that is a kind of risky strategy for the long term and that that's a, a gap in their portfolio that would be worth filling. And so I would be, if I was in charge of Rolex right now, introducing something like this. Anyway, what do you guys think? Do you think I'm um, wrong? Do you think that Rolex can continue the, exactly the way they are, just making these sorts of watches and don't need to evolve at all, that they can continue escalating their price with nothing of more relying more and more on gem setting and that sort of thing and not on this kind of horological updates. As I said before, this is Pete McConville. I've been Not So Obvious Watchers. Leave your ideas, comments, opinions below and I'll see you later. Bye.